Uh, you ready? It was just an eight minute drive down PA 309 for the Springfield Spartans as they take on their conference rival in Sheltonham and the Panthers. Springfield looking for their first win in this series in over 30 years. It's PA Suburban One Football here on the Sports Fan Base Network. Hello everyone, Darren Healy here as we get ready for this much anticipated matchup between the 4-1 Springfield Township Spartans and the 3-3 Shellingham Panthers. Both teams began conference play last week with Springfield picking up a dub while Sheltonham took one in the loss column. Let's begin with the home team, Sheltonham. It's homecoming here for the Panthers and boy are they wired up. Last week a tough away loss to Plymouth White Marsh 37-6. A lot of sloppy play, three fumbles on handoffs, a safety suffered on a punt, and the Panthers had no answers for the Colonials' run game. That game was played on Sunday. It was pouring rain out all day, which definitely made things harder for the Panthers. According to Max Preps, Sheltonham only had 104 total yards of offense, all of them coming on the ground. Jonathan Ingram only attempting two passes that game. Meanwhile, for the Spartans, they dismantled the Trojans of Wissahickon last week, their fifth straight game of scoring at least 20 points. In fact, the last time they didn't put up 20 on the scoreboard is when they were when they played Sheltonham in Wincote last year. I was talking to Coach Shelley about that game yesterday, and he said they definitely felt like they could hang with Sheltonham last year, but that game was being played in an absolute monsoon, and the hard running power of Sheltonham was too much for Springfield. So Springfield is looking for their fifth win on the season and their first win against Sheltonham since the early 90s. That's over 30 years ago. On the flip side, Sheltonham is looking to get above 500 and clinch their first conference win on the year. Great game coming up here in Wincote. A gorgeous 66 degree autumn evening. The starters in opening kickoff right after this. Today's game is brought to you in part by Robertson Gamble, your number one source for property maintenance and restoration, specializing in storm damage cleanup, serving New Jersey and eastern Pennsylvania. Visit www.robertsongamble.com to learn more. Thank you to Robertson Gamble for sponsoring today's game.
And welcome back. Shellingham won the toss. They elected to defer, so Springfield will be receiving the opening kickoff. Both teams began conference play last week, as I mentioned, in the open. Shellingham, a tough loss. It was some really rough weather while playing Plymouth White Marsh. Exact opposite of that for them tonight, though. It's perfect, clear skies. It's warm. Friday night light, not the uh, dingy Sunday gloomy afternoon they were playing in. An electric crowd on hand here in Winco. It was homecoming today for Shellingham. A lot of fans coming out to support the team. As Grady sets up for the opening kickoff. Dylan McKenzie. One of the Spartans back to receive the kick. And we are underway. Line drive kick. It's McKenzie fielding it. About the 15-yard line. He finds an opening. Runs over. A Panther. And will get tackled down near the 35-yard line. Ladies and gentlemen, that's quite an intro for Springfield star player Dylan McKenzie. When I was talking to Coach Shelley, he could just not stop talking about number one on the field. An incredibly versatile player, a senior leader. He will play quarterback. He will play wide receiver. He will play running back. He will play defensive back. And he will also punt the ball. An incredibly versatile weapon that Springfield has here. The 6'3", 190 senior. As he will begin in the gun, two receivers near side. And he fakes the pitch to the far side, rolls near. Tosses and it's going to be caught by Max Sanchez. Avoids a Panther defender and he's tackled out of bounds right before the 50 yard line. So already seeing the mobility of McKenzie there on that rollout after faking the pitch. The whistle is blown. And they're making a substitution. Mooney is coming out. And in his place is Fahim Barnes. So Mooney subs out of the game on defense. Empty backfield except for McKenzie. Two receivers, both sides. Rolling far side. Now cuts it back. He's going to take it himself past the 50. And it's thrown into the Shellingham sideline to pick up of about three. Fahim Barnes in there on the tackle. So this Springfield offense has really had to change throughout the year. Coming into today, seven starters are on injury reserve. Springfield has had to really change their offense to fit the players that have had to step up, and Coach Shelley has been incredibly impressed with how much his players and his backups have stepped up, especially the lower classmen. Hendrak, the lone receiver on the far side. Ramir Ware in the backfield. As Sanchez goes in motion. And Kenzie going to keep it. But a group of Shellingham Panthers are in there on the tackle. See, Justice Sanders was one of the uh, many Panthers that were able to bring down McKenzie. It is officially October, so you will see a good bit of players wearing a bunch of pink gear in support of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Just about everyone on Springfield sidelines are wearing pink socks. See a scattering of pink for uh, Shellingham, some towels, some cleats, some shoes. All in an effort to raise awareness for breast cancer. Third and about five. Three by two set. McKenzie rolls far side. 
It's going to just flip it out of bounds after not being able to find anyone open. And that'll bring up fourth down. Did you see Zach Strange beating his the offensive lineman opens immediately and putting pressure on McKenzie. So fourth and five in Shellingham territory. Coach Shelley electing to go for it here. So a bold decision early on. Let's see if it pays off. Same formation, three receivers near. McKenzie under center. Might be trying to draw him off sides. And that's exactly what they were trying to do. And Springfield now takes a timeout and will think it over. So this is Coach Chris Shelley's 18th season with the Springfield Spartans. They have not won a game against Sheltonham since he was a junior in Springfield Township High School back in 1993. Now, granted, that comes with an asterisk. Springfield doesn't always play Sheltonham every year. Springfield is actually independent for quite a while. They rejoined the Suburban One Conference about 2012-2013. And the last time these two teams met was the final game of the regular season. It was a home game for Sheltonham, and they were able to ground and pound that Spartan defense in the pouring rain. So Coach Shelley talks it over with his offense. And it looks like they come back out onto the field. Keep in mind, McKenzie is the punter for the Spartans. So QB kick is always possible. Ron Gibbons is behind him in the pistol. Hendrack, the receiver on the near side. McKenzie. Fakes the pitch, rolls far side. Got loaded downfield. He has a man open, but overthrows him. Max Sanchez was open on the play, but McKenzie put a little bit too much on it. It's a turnover on downs, and Sheltonham will now take over. It's a good starting field position here for the Panthers. As they are laid onto the field by number 10 junior quarterback, Jonathan Ingram. Last week, only three or only two passes from Ingram. He actually ended up coming out of the game due to an illness. They ended up putting uh, Adam Rogers in, but regardless, they still wanted to run the ball due to the weather. But Ingram is back in and healthy now as it's a play action to start off. Over the middle and incomplete. Intended for Malachi White, but broken up there by Mateo Ringgold. Shelton Hammer is actually able to get a good bit of Springfield defenders to bite down on that play action. As it's the same set. And Ingram now hands it off and he's going to be met behind the line of scrimmage. He stood no chance on that one. Trey McLeod. Loss of about four. And almost immediately Springfield was able to penetrate the protection, and that brings up third and long here for the Panthers. Four receivers and one tight end. That's Zaire Williams on the near side, and Ingram going to roll far side. Avoids a defender and tries to get it to Laquan Sanford, but it's off his hands and it's incomplete. And it looks like Sheldonham will bring on the punt team, I believe. Yes. Punt team's coming out. So three and out here for Sheldonham to begin the game. McKenzie. Being the versatile weapon he is, is back deep to receive the kick. Sheldonham missing a player out on the punt team. It's 
Line drive, wobbling spiral of a kick. Bounces back and will be down to about the 26 yard line of Springfield. So both offenses with fairly quick drives to begin the game, 8-16 left here in the first quarter. Student section is rowdy today. Like I say, it's homecoming. You know the atmosphere is going to be absolutely electric. Something else I find cool is that the uh, Panthers cheerleaders are all wearing the alternate uniforms of the uh, Shelton Ham football team, their yellow jerseys. I find that pretty cool. As McKenzie sends Sanchez in motion. Read option. Running it towards the near side. And Mooney is in there. No, excuse me. Trey McLeod was the one to bring down McKenzie. So a gain of about four brings up second and six. As the Spartans are in 31 personnel. Sanchez in motion, same play far side this time. I believe that's going to be a tackle for loss. No, they're moving the chain up. He gained a couple of yards on that play. That brings up a more manageable third down here for the Springfield offense. Three yards gained on the play. Springfield's D or Sheldonham's defense did a good job at shutting down that Spartan offense. Hendrack, your receiver on the near side. Ron Gibbons in the backfield with McKenzie. They pitch it. And being demolished behind the line of scrimmage was Caden Bronson. He was met by a couple of different Panther defenders. Saw both Mooney and McLeod in there. And that brings up fourth down. Excuse me, that was actually Ryan Marcino, the ball carrier. As McKenzie now will punt the ball. So that almost begs the question, what can't this guy do? You got Wyke and Mooney back there. McKenzie, great kick. That will land inside the 20, takes a good bounce, picked up inside the 10 by Mooney, trying to make something happen. And he only gained about four yards on the play. That took a fantastic Springfield bounce, landed inside the 10. And McKenzie single-handedly flips the field for Springfield as the Panthers are backed up deep in their own territory. Ingram in the gun. Oh, it's a bad snap. It goes into the end zone. Ingram picks it up, tries to throw it. That might be intentional grounding in the end zone. He underhanded it. A flag is down on the field. That ball definitely did not reach the line of scrimmage, but let's see if they declare if there was a eligible receiver in the area. There was not. It's intentional grounding in the end zone, and that's a pair of points for Springfield. It was a good effort by Ingram to try and just throw the ball away and avoid points being put on the board. And that's how we will get our first points 
of the game, a safety after an errant snap. So Springfield will now, or excuse me, Shellingham will now kick the ball away to Springfield. The Panthers did suffer a safety last week. That was on a punt after another bad snap. They were backed up deep on maybe about their own three or two yard line in the pouring rain. So it's two to nothing Spartans now. McKenzie back deep to field the kick. Grady. We'll send it away to him. We also got Capofieri back there. And Grady, a line drive, almost squib kick. And a flag is thrown. It's going to be offsides on Sheltonham. As McKenzie just casually throws the ball 40 yards back to the referee. So Shellingham will now kick it from their own 10-yard line. McKenzie and Capofieri at their own 40. Brady now approaches and... Another line drive kick, Capo Fieri will touch it. McKenzie, did he recover? I believe he did. So that almost went sour for Springfield, but they get the ball. Great field position at their own 43-yard line. As the refs now huddle together. We now go over to talk to Coach Gore. I think there might be a clock issue. So a brief break in the action. Yeah, yeah, I told you. 
So the issue is resolved. 4.36 remaining here. Or excuse me, 5.32 remaining. As Sanchez goes in motion, McKenzie hands it to the halfback. Gaining nearly seven yards on the play. That's Ryan Gibbons. So it's a pickup of seven for Gibbons. It's now second and three here for the Spartans. And Drack goes to the far side of the field. Once again, 31 personnel. Man in motion. They now pitch it to Gibbons. Far side. Tries to find the hole. But it appears he will fall short of the line of scrimmage, if not only gaining about one. So he does pick up a yard on the play. Brings up third and short. Springfield was in this situation last time and was unable to convert. In the pistol, Sanchez takes it on the Jets. We picks up the first down and a little bit more. They're saying the ball, or no. Shellenham tried uh, conveying that the ball was out, but the officials rule him down first. Max Sanchez, the ball so it's a first down for Springfield. Ball at the 43. Springfield will come out in the gun. One receiver once again. McKenzie calls for the snap. It's a read option. He keeps it himself, finds an opening, picks up the first down. Dell McKenzie so quick with the football, finding the open hole and just swiftly running with it. And it's another first down for Springfield. So this offense is kind of like a hybrid multiple offense operating primarily out of the gun. You'll see a wing T formation. They will spread the ball out if need to. And the offense, like I said earlier, has had to adapt based on who is healthy and who is not. Obviously the key weapon in that offense is number one, Dylan McKenzie. And right now, they're doing a good job driving downfield against Sheltonham. Kenzie, it's a QB sweep play. Picks up about five yards on the play, at, down about the 25 yard line. It's going to be second and five. So even though the offense has been out to a pretty good start, for Springfield, Coach Shelley still wants them to improve on execution, just all the little things, like making sure you run the right route, keeping on your block long enough, and he said once the little things come, then the big things will fall into place. Second and five, another keeper for McKenzie, but he's brought down almost immediately. Rasheed Bradsher, the defensive lineman bringing McKenzie down. So it's third and five once again. Got a buck 58 left here in the first quarter of play. Springfield converted their previous third down this drive. Let's see if they can do it again. Empty set. And a flag, ooh, let's see, I saw a timeout single, then I saw a flag. Let's see which one they grant. And they were unable to get the timeout in on time. 
or no, excuse me, it's a false start before they can get the timeout in. I thought it was going to be a delay of game. Saw a coach on the far sideline. Signal timeout, but the timeout doesn't go into effect until an official signals it. So it doesn't matter when the player or coach calls for it. The official has to call for it for it to go into effect. And Springfield flinched right as that happened. They'll bring up third and ten. Cheerleaders are getting rowdied up. Sheltonham will like to stop Springfield here on this third down and ten. And McKenzie, same formation. Roll far side. He will flick it out. Passes caught, but it's not going to be enough for a first down. That's Gibbons on the catch. So they make up the yardage lost on the penalty, but that now brings up fourth and five. So let's see what Springfield elects to do here. Seems as if they're going to go for it. In the gun is McKenzie. Hendrack, your near side receiver. Gibbons in the backfield. Fake it to him. They flip it back now, and that play went south very fast. A bunch of different Sheltonham defenders there in on the tackle. Ryan Marciano was the guy who ended up getting the delayed reverse. It's a turnover on downs, and the Panthers will get the ball back with 55 seconds remaining here. And we will once again see David Ingram and the Panther offense last on the field. But we're off due to a safety. And they have a little bit of a jumbo set going here. Hand it off. And that's Mooney. Powering his way. Might be enough for a first. See a couple of extra offensive linemen lining up in the backfield there. And another handoff. Mooney. Unable to get anything. So they now swap out their personnel. That first run by Mooney was a first down, so that brings up second and ten. Four receivers. Ingram will look to the air, flicks it out, it's White. So he's able to haul in the reception. It's third and six, and... believe that is the uh, I didn't see a timeout call I believe that's the end of the first quarter yeah it is clock wasn't running so end of the first quarter here Springfield leads it two to nothing over Sheltonham a third down conversion coming up for the Panthers right after this And welcome back. 
Both teams flip their side of the field. Third down and about seven here. For the Panthers. You got White and Sanford as your near side receivers. Man in motion, they flip it. That's Zaire Williams, avoiding a defender, trying to break another tackle. He picks up the first down and plenty more. Flag is thrown on the play. So Zaire Williams getting the ball in that little jet sweep. Almost more of a flip, so I think that might go down as a pass technically for Ingram. It's gonna be a face mask for Springfield. Now tackle on a couple extra yards. And not only do the Panthers convert on third down, they are now well within Springfield territory at the 35 yard line. You got three receivers near, or far, excuse me. Ingram. We'll look to the air, scrambles now. Oh, he's going to go down, he gets sacked. Believe that was Johnny Nozzle, the freshman, number 88, in there on the sack. It looked like Ingram was going to avoid it, but Nozzle able to wrap him up near the legs. Now Shellingham running with an, a hurry up offense. They hand it off. It's McLeod. Oh my goodness, seeing just an absolute block clinic going on there. That's going to be taunting from number 62. First you see him throw him to the ground. Then you see him clapping in the defender's face. That's Forey Cherry. Absolutely wrecked that Springfield defender on the block and then began clapping in his face. That's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. I mean, it was a great block, but afterwards, that's where the, uh, the laundry started to come out into the field. So that brings up second and a good bit of yardage. It looks like maybe, ooh, I can't even tell. Second and about 27 maybe? Let's call it that. Regardless, Chellenham has a long way to go. It's actually third down, excuse me. Long way to go to move the chains. Man in motion. They fake it to him. It's a screen pass. And that's immediately stopped by Springfield. Sanford able to catch it. But there was about four or five Spartan defenders able to stop him. And the punting team will come out. So still the sophomore, back to punt, and you got McKenzie for Springfield, back deep to receive it. Good snap, still just gets it away. Knuckleball punt, and that takes a very good bounce will be downed near the five or six yard line. So a great punt there by Still. Just able to get it off before it was blocked. Does a good job at pinning Springfield back deep in their own territory.
So the ball is on the five yard line for Springfield. They have to work 95 yards to get to the end zone. They're going to spread it out here. McKenzie, the lone man in the backfield. Two receivers near side. He's going to look to throw. No, it's a QB draw. Breaks two tackles. But una unable to break a third. Wrapped up near his feet. Doesn't pick up anything on the play. Springfield want to make sure that if they uh, don't pick up the first down, at least make it harder for uh, Cheltenham to retaliate with a safety that would tie it up at two, which is something you don't see often. One receiver, that's near side. McKenzie keeps it on the read. And unable to pick up much yardage on the ground. So in call, uh, talking with Coach Shelley, he said that this defensive group for Sheltonham, incredibly good. I mean, they're just really well coached. Their football IQ is fantastic. And it's being shown here. Springfield hasn't been able to uh, get much going on offense despite the talents of McKenzie and his supporting cast. Of course, one of the star players on that Panther defense is number five standing up right there, Keon Wright. Multiple D1 Power 5 offers. Schools like Penn State, Ole Miss, Nebraska, Maryland, Duke. I could go on and on with how many schools want to recruit that young man as a timeout is called. So while we take a break, let's tell you about our today's sponsor, Robertson Gamble. Your number one source for property maintenance and restoration, specializing in storm damage cleanup, serving New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania. Visit www.robertsongamble.com to learn more. Thank you to Robertson Gamble for sponsoring today's game. And while you got your phone out Googling Robertson Gamble, make sure you go on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Follow all of Sports Fan Base Network's social media platforms at the SFBN. We appreciate all your support, and we sure do love broadcasting local sports for you here. So 8.04 left in the second quarter. Springfield with a 2 to nothing lead after a bad snap went into the end zone, and Ingram suffered intentional grounding in the end zone, which resulted in the safety. Third and seven. Hendrack and Sanchez are your near side receivers. McKenzie, rolling near side, right in his face. Will they get him down the end zone? No, he stays on his feet. It's picked off. Oh my goodness. Mooney with the pick. McKenzie. Did a good job at avoiding pressure. Wright was bearing down on him. He escapes the sack, but there's Mooney picking off the sideline or picking off the ball on the sideline, getting one foot in bounds, and a huge turn of events here for Sheltonham. So fantastic starting field position here for the Panthers. They're at the 11-yard line, so they can still get a first down without needing to score. Got two big fellas lined up in the backfield. And I believe a false start is called. So 
So false start there, we'll move the ball back five yards. They go with the same formation in the gun. They got McLeod in the backfield. And he will just get a burst of speed into the end zone, basically untouched. Trey McLeod, touchdown, Cheltenham. So they're able to capitalize on the interception from Dylan McKenzie and put up six. And the extra point is coming your way. The speed on the cloud is unbelievable sometimes. Just so quick. And Oma, it's so effortless also. Great blocking from the offense. That formation's working with the extra offensive lineman in the backfield. Grady on the kick, the extra point. And that is up and good. So the Panthers from the legs of Trey McLeod and the interception from Mooney take the lead here against Springfield 7-2. 750 remain in this quarter. We'll be right back right after this. Back here in Wincote, Cheltenham leads Springfield Township 7-2 following the interception by Mooney and then the rushing touchdown from Trey McLeod. Grady once again to kick it. You got Gibbons and Dylan McKenzie back deep to receive it for the Spartans. And Grady Line drive kick deep. Gibbons will field it before it goes in. No, oh, what happened? There's a flag thrown way behind the play. I think what might have happened is that I thought Gibbons called for fair catch and then picked it up after it hit the ground, but it looks like the chains are being set up at the 20. So it might just be a normal touchback. There was a flag back deep at about the 40 yard line. I also saw one of the coaches just immediately come in and get Mooney. Not sure if uh, any words were exchanged there between him and a uh, defender for Springfield. Oh, it was a block. It's a clipping against Springfield. That'll back them up. So they get the ball at their own 10 yard line, second consecutive drive where they are backed up deep in their own territory. So McKenzie is in the gun. Sanchez goes in motion. And a timeout taken here by Cheltenham. Believe that is their second of the half.
So the timeout has concluded. It will be first and 10 for Springfield. Sanchez once again goes in motion and another whistle is blown. I don't see a flag, a flag down. I, uh, maybe there is, I can't see it. Yeah, that penalty was, it was an illegal substitution on Cheltenham. So they now move the ball back up, so that negates the uh, the clipping penalty previously. So all of that just ended up back up where we started. Sanchez once again in motion, and guess what, another flag. It's a false start on Springfield. So we're taking it back again now, y'all. Basically doing the hokey pokey with the line of scrimmage, you think about it. Go in with it, they're going out. So it's now first and 10 from the 10 yard line. Let's see if we can get a snap off, we do. It's a jet sweep to Max Sanchez who won in motion. Sanchez picks up a few yards on the play. So it's second and seven here for the Spartan offense. 7-12 remain in the half. Following about three plays in a row with a penalty. They fake the handoff. It's McKenzie on the keeper. Two yards gained on the play. It's going to bring up third and five. Springfield has had varying success with third down conversions so far this game. McKenzie relaying the play call to his fellow teammates. You got Hendrack and Sanchez near side, two receivers far. McKenzie rolls towards his own sideline, flicks it out. It's caught, but not enough for the first down. It's Marcino. Hauling that one in, it's fourth and short. So let's see if Coach Shelley gets aggressive with it. It appears they will go for it. Fourth and about two here in their own territory, a gutsy move. Oh my goodness, they try and draw him off sides, but instead one of their own men jump. And that wasn't even like subtle, he leapfrogged that. I think that was Ryan Bell. The offensive lineman guilty of that.
So they'll still line up to go for it. Remember, McKenzie can punt. And that's exactly what he does here. QB kick. Lands at about the 50. Takes a reasonable bounce. And rolls out bounds in Cheltenham territory at about the 47 yard line. So that's something you do get with the uh, a quarterback who's also your punter. You can line up to go for it and then fool the defense and do a quick QB kick. Seen guys like Ben Roethlisberger do that before. I believe Brady has done that before also, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, Randall Cunningham would not even just try and trick the defense by punting. He would legitimately line up as a punter. He's probably the best punter the Eagles have ever had. So Ingram in the gun. Three receivers near side. He looks to the air. Defender unprotected. Goes deep incomplete. Intended for Sanford. It looked like it was just a tiny bit overthrown. There was a Springfield defender who got into the backfield basically unprotected, but decided to halt when uh, he was about to sack Ingram. As Williams goes in motion. Springfield showing blitz. They bring pressure over the middle, through the hands, and incomplete. Michael Dunn, the intended target on that play. First time we've said his name tonight. A lot of zip on that pass from Ingram. Might have been a little bit too much for Dunn to handle. So Dunn and Sanford line up far side. You got White and Alexander Lee Odom on the bottom of your screen. Ingram trying to make sure his offense is settled and they know the play. Williams goes in motion. Pressure almost immediately. It's caught by Sanford. Maybe one gain on the play, not much. That brings up fourth down. And uh, the punting team will come back out on the field. Still the punter with McKenzie back deep. Not too much offense here in the first half. Springfield recording a safety. And then Trey McLeod with a rushing touchdown following a McKenzie interception. Still receives a snap. Line drive. Kick. McKenzie fields it on one hop. Cuts it back. Still on his feet. Sinks off a couple of tacklers. And he gets a lot of yards on that play. McKenzie. Doing a great job turning what looked like nothing into something. That was a big something he turned it into. Gain of at least 30 on the play. Saw a couple of different Panthers have the opportunity to tackle him. But they were unable to wrap him up. Ball is placed on Springfield's own 45 yard line. So you got 341 here down by 5. Offense hasn't been able to do much against this stout Cheltenham defense. So Dylan McKenzie lines up in the pistol. Man in motion. They pitch it out. Oh, and a head stick laid on there. Gain of 
Gibbons absolutely laid out. That was Mikel Smallwood putting the boom on. So now you got a three receiver set. Gibbons in the backfield once again. Fake the pitch. Pressure on his face as he throws. Broken up almost. Picked off. Saw the safety, Mooney, basically lifting up McKenzie as he threw it. And I think McLeod had the opportunity to intercept it, but he'll settle with a pass breakup there. So it's now third and 12. Springfield would like to enter halftime with a touchdown on the board. Chillingham has five men on the line. Two linebackers. Sanchez goes in motion. McKenzie facing pressure. Scrambles. Comes near side. Tries to take it himself. Pushed out of bounds. Springfield wants a flag on the play. None is thrown. And I think McKenzie was able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Couldn't find anyone open. Decided to try and test his own luck. Taking it himself. They're actually ruling it no gain on the play. So it's 4th and 12. I could legitimately see them actually going for it here. Maybe if McKenzie doesn't like what he sees from the defense, he could pooch kick it again. They're prepared for that. They have McLeod back deep a little bit. And actually, Mateo Ringgold came in to take the snap. And you saw McKenzie split out wide. Coach Shelley said they will do this. McKenzie is a very versatile player. He said that when he does play out wide or when he takes snaps as a running back, that's going to be Ringgold as the quarterback. So before this fourth down conversion, we would like to tell you about Today's sponsor, Robertson Gamble, your number one source for property maintenance and restoration, specializing in storm damage cleanup, serving New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania. Visit www.robertsongamble.com to learn more. Thank you to Robertson Gamble for sponsoring today's game. So Springfield comes out of the huddle, fourth and 12, down seven to two. McKenzie is in the backfield as the quarterback. And you got Mooney and McLeod back deep to uh, receive a possible punt. It's again having some uh, clock and scoreboard issues. I mean, so while they get that figured out just think about something that Springfield could potentially do you have a one on one, one on one at the top of the screen with Macon and Hendrack maybe this could be a little bit of an option for McKenzie where if Hendrack beats Macon off the line he fakes a kick and throws it to him I mean you got McLeod and Mooney at least 20 yards behind the play bringing a new definition to too high safety. McKenzie puts Sanchez in motion. And another pooch kick towards the far sideline. A wobbler. 
So no option there. McKenzie just pooches it away. And Cheltenham has an opportunity to put some more points on the board before we head into halftime. So a Springfield offense that coming into this game was averaging 29.8 points per game. It's been limited to just two here in the first half. Those points didn't even come from offense. It's Ingram, rolls near side. Thought about throwing it deep, takes it himself, has some room to run, slides down right before the 50. Picks up a first down on that play. Chillingham knows the situation here. Ingram lines in the backfield by himself. You got four receivers far side leaving a one-on-one -on -one at the bottom of your screen. And a flag was thrown on the play. Yeah, that one-on-one. -on -one, the bomb you screen, you saw that. That's Zaire Williams against Mateo Ringgold. So there was a penalty against Springfield on that play to move the ball up five yards. Same formation. Pressure being brought. Oh, and looking through his reads and stumbling down is Ingram. He slipped. The turf monster got him. He looked near side, didn't see what he liked, didn't like what he saw. Looked far side, then one, looked like it won. He, excuse me. He looked like he wanted to tuck it down and run himself, but tripping over his own feet. So that brings up second and long. I got Michael Dunn by himself on the near side. They now shift. Wyke and Lee Odom join them. Ingram puts Wyke in motion. Pressure being brought again. Far side throw. It's caught by Wyke. He gets out of bounds. Nice little gain on the play to bring up third down and a little bit more manageable, say about six or seven on the play. It's third and six. Ingram by himself in the backfield. Rolls near. Facing a man with pressure, and a pass is caught by Laquan Sanford. He survives a huge hit there from Matea Ringgold. So Ingram, with pressure bearing down on him, delivers a dot. Great play on both ends, and Cheltenham calls a timeout as they are now in Springfield territory. Panthers lead the Spartans 7-2 here as we are nearing the end of the first half. Springfield, excuse me, Cheltenham will receive the second half kickoff. So trying to get a little bit of a uh, two-for-one special here. Score a touchdown right before half and then maybe score a touchdown on the opening drive of the second half. So both teams break their huddles. You got trips to the near side. Nobody on the far side. 
Running back joins Ingram in the backfield. He will look to throw. Good protection. Flings it. It's Williams on the catch. Breaks a tackle. And will be drugged down near the 20-yard line. Another timeout was called as Cheltenham reaches the red zone. They're in prime position to score at the 15-yard line. So the timeout concludes. Cheerleaders on the track doing some backhand springs. Trying to get the crowd rallied up here. It's first and 10 at the 15. Ingram flips it out. McLeod catches it, trying to stay in bounds. Goes out right before he crosses the goal line. I think the ball might be placed at about the three or four. A quick little pass there out to McLeod. And boy, would this be clutch if Cheltenham can score here. Mike and Williams are your receivers far side. Laquan Sanford, one-on-one -on -one near Trey McLeod's the halfback. Tight end in motion. Ingram fumbles a snap. It was a low snap. And I believe Springfield recovers it. No, they're actually going to rule it that Cheltenham recovers it. They're going to try and spike the ball. Flag on the play. It also looked like, at, like simultaneously that Ingram kind of took a knee while spiking it. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit of a technical difficulty with the clock. So they're keeping the clock on the field. So just in case you're confused at home, that's the reasoning. Tight end shifts, three receivers far side. Ingram looks to the air, throws it over the middle. It's caught. Malachi Wake, touchdown, Cheltenham. So following a bad snap and what was almost a botched, sm a botched spike, the Panthers are able to put it into the end zone. They're now up 13 to two with the extra point coming your way. Might have been either a jump or offsides. I think Ringgold got a little too excited. It is offsides. Ringgold did jump a little early. So let's see if uh, the Panthers want to maybe go for two now instead. Yes, it looks like that. It looks like they might be going with that jumbo package with a couple of extra big fellas in the backfield. Who knows, maybe they'll even give it to one of the offensive linemen. Ingram comes back out on the field. McLeod is the halfback. You got two offensive linemen basically lined up as fullbacks. It's a full house formation. 
They could also always sneak it and use the offensive lineman to push Ingram, but no, it goes to McLeod. Avoids a tackler in the backfield. And he breaks the plane and gets in for the two-point conversion. So Chetlinham taking advantage of that penalty on the attempted extra point and exchanging it for two points and they now lead it 15 to two. So we are still experiencing some uh, clock technical difficulty. So once again, the time is being kept on the field by the refs. Got a little bit of a break dance going down there on the, uh, on the track. It is homecoming, so all of the students and fans here are definitely pumped up, especially with Cheltenham having a 15 to two lead. They tried an onside kick. It went through a Springfield defender's hands and still running with it. No lateraling it. They catch it. Oh my goodness, that might be uh, <laughs> one of this, uh, the most exciting onside kicks I think you could say I've seen. So I believe that's the end of the half. So not a bad idea to uh, try and do a little onside kick. It went through the hands of Rymir Ware. He then pitched it to Ryan Marcino, who then got tackled a few seconds later. And that will conclude the first half of play. A rushing touchdown from Trey McLeod, a passing touchdown from David Ingram to Malachi Wake. And a safety is how we got to 15 to 2. We had to have, and before we had to have time, once again, let's tell you about our sponsor for today's game, Roberts and Gamble, your number one source for property management and restoration, specializing in storm damage cleanup, serving New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania. Visit www.robertsandgamble.com to learn more. Thank you to Roberts and Gamble for sponsoring today's game. So we'll be back with the second half of play right after this.
And now for our seniors. First up, Lucy Trot and Brian Trainer. And our second couple is Mariah Winfield and Keon Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give all of our applicants a round of applause. And the student council has declared the winners. We will have two couples tonight, one underclassman and one from the seniors. Starting with the underclassmen, Daniela Rodriguez and Theodore Mayer. And for our seniors, Mariah Winfield and Keon Wright. A huge thank you to all of our 2022 homecoming court applicants and our student council. Thank you for coming out and showing your support for the Cheltenham Panthers. And hopefully everyone will enjoy the homecoming dance tomorrow night.
back here live in Winco, Pennsylvania. Cheltenham currently leading the Springfield Township Spartans 15-2. Before we recap the first half, once again, we want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Robertson Gamble, your number one source for property maintenance and restoration, specializing in storm damage cleanup, serving New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania. Visit www.robertsongamble.com to learn more. Thank you to Robertson Gamble for sponsoring today's game. So the scoring got started with a safety due to uh, Jonathan Ingram intentionally grounding the ball in the end zone. Dylan McKenzie then threw a pick to Mooney that was followed by a Trey McLeod rushing touchdown. And then right before the half ended, Malachi Wyke on a seam route caught a touchdown. They then went for two with McLeod. And that is how we have 15-2 to two here as we begin the second half. And that's honestly kind of a shocking score. Springfield's offense averaging 29.8 points per game. I mean... I was just not expecting for them to be shut out like they were, have been. But once again, a lot of the coaches I've talked to have praised this Panther defensive group. It's one of the best in the area. Allowing just 18.3 points per game. And that's even with them allowing 36 last week to Plymouth White Marsh. I was also curious how uh, Coach Gore and the team would handle such a quick turnaround from Sunday to Friday. He said that uh, a lot of it just had to do with, uh, you know, being uh, being resourceful. They used Zoom and FaceTime for a lot of their meetings. Uh, and really, that was how they prepared well in just a uh, four-day notice. As Kim is ready to uh, kick it away. Short kick. And Zaire Williams touches it. It looked like he wanted to let it go out of bounds. He's now going to try and win with it. He breaks a couple of tackles. He has two blockers. He's at the 30. He's down near the 40. David near side by push out of bounds at the 50. Oh, it looked like he was going to go all the way. But he just stepped out of bounds near the 50-yard line. And that's how he wanted to get started to the second half. Zaire Williams, what looked like to be a fatal mistake at first, cut it back upfield, avoided three tacklers, had a posse out in front, and now Chillingham has the ball at their own 48-yard line. That will get this crowd going. Ingram with a split back formation. Light goes in motion. They're going to throw it out to him in the flat. And they're going to roll it incomplete. Ball was a forward pass. And it hit the ground right before it got to Wyke. So the throw out to the flat fails. It's now second and 10. Chilling him in the eye. Ingram hands it off. That's Mooney. He breaks a tackle. He's still going. Bounces off another defender. And will go down near the 30 yard line. This run game for Cheltenham is lethal. It's something that every opposing team does not look forward to facing and game planning for, and that's why the run blocking combined with the athleticism of Mooney and McLeod make it so hard to defend. In the pistol, Ingram. Pressure coming. They hand it off to the wide receiver. That's Malachi Wyke. He was lined up as a running back. And it looks like he 
Might have gone back to the line of scrimmage. So it remains second and 10 at the 30. Mooney remains in the backfield with Ingram. You got Alexander Lee at him and White as your near side receivers. Looking to pass is Ingram. Throws a near side. That pass is caught. That's White once again. He had the touchdown reception in the first half. And picks up a handful of yards there. That now brings up a manageable third and four. In the eye once again, play action, looking far side, now throws it over the middle, it's caught! And being tackled inside the five yard line, that's Tyrese Alexander Lee Odom. They pick up the first down, or now well inside the red zone, at about the five yard line. Same formation. Play action once again. Over the middle pass is caught. And guess who? Tyrese Alexander Leo. Them his second consecutive catch. This one goes for Pater. And Cheltenham extends their lead. 21 to 2. The student section absolutely loving what they just saw from this Panthers offense. It all started with that Zaire Williams kick return. A good run from Mooney. A couple of good passes from Ingram, mainly targeting Malachi Wyke, but he's able to find Alexander Lee Odom in the end zone as Grady is now on for the extra point. High snap, it goes down. Kick is up and it is good. So Cheltenham extends their lead 22 to 20. If Springfield wants to remain in this game, they got to get something going. Their offense has not been able to get by this Panthers defender group. And it is to be noted that Springfield does have seven starters on IR. And they've had to adapt their offense all year based on who's been healthy. Obviously, the uh, one focal point of the offense has been Dylan McKenzie. As he is back deep to receive the kick. He's been the quarterback for just about every snap except for one. And I don't even think they actually snapped the ball in that play. I think a timeout was called beforehand. But we've only seen McKenzie as a quarterback. Haven't seen him as a running back. Haven't really seen him as a wide receiver. As Grady lines up to kick it. And line drive, good kick there. That's McKenzie fielding it, trying to get something going. Goes up the middle of the field, spins, breaks off a couple of would-be tacklers, and is down near the 30-yard line. So let's see if this Springfield offense can get a spark. They're down by 20. Their only points came from defense after a safety. And this Cheltenham defensive group has shown why so many offenses do not look forward to facing them. Givens joins McKenzie in the backfield. Sanchez in motion. It's a handoff to Gibbons. Picks up a handful of yards on that play. 
splits the uh, distance for first down and half. It's now second and five. The same formation, Kenny Granderson is the wide out on the far side of your screen. Now it's a jet sweep to, Mar uh, to Max Sanchez. They try to push the pile, but only a few yards are picked up. It's about third and one. It's called a long one. Third down has not been very favorable for Springfield. Believe they were able to convert the first two they've had, but after that, Cheltenham has just been locking them down. Third and one, it's a QB sneak. And McKenzie, I believe he uh, picks up enough to move the chains, he does. So Springfield kind of going uh, slow and steady with the run game here. Want to get into a rhythm and find some sort of offensive semblance because they have just been shut out so far. So it's a first and 10 at the 42 yard line. Kenzie in the pistol. Sanchez in motion. Handed off to the tailback. And really nothing gained there. That was Rymir Ware. Shaken up a little bit on the play so he will come out. Gibbons takes his spot. Where it does pick up about two yards on the play. So it's been slow and steady for Cheltenham so far to begin this second half of offensive play. 7.55 and counting. Now they go empty. Alexander rolls to the far side, has a man in his face, and down he goes! Faced with pressure almost immediately. And that's Fahim Barnes, the senior in there, taking down Mackenzie Alexander. That brings up third and long here for the Spartan offense. So let's see what they dial up here. Third and long. Offense has struggled all game. Got Marcino and Gibbons. Receivers near side. Fake the pitch. Now they're looking near side. Jukes out, Bricks Williams, and McKenzie's gonna take it himself. Oh, he got hit head to head there about the 40 yard line. Zach Strange was one of the Panthers in there bringing McKenzie out of bounds. And it looks like it will be a punt play on fourth down. Not, uh, not going to try and fool them by lining up to go for it and then a pooch kick. Wyke and Mooney are your return men. McKenzie, of course, is the punter. Snap fielded, line drive kick. That takes a good bounce. Let's see if that gets to the end zone. 
They pick it up right before the end zone. It's Moody fielding it. He goes up the middle. He's getting a lot of good blocks. Tries to stay on his feet, but is tackled down right before the 30-yard line. Blocking ended up shaping up nicely there. As the Panthers have some pretty good field position to begin this drive. Ball at the 28. So eight yards better than a touchback. Trips near side, Ingram in the pistol. Ingram hands it off, that's Mooney. Finds a hole towards his near sideline, and he's gonna keep his legs moving, and he picks up a first down. Cheltenham with the uh, quick pace offense. Wyke and Williams now go out far side, and Laquan Sanford is the receiver near. Tight end goes in motion. Ingram hands it off. That's McLeod. Bounces off a tackler. Runs through another Spartan and is taken out out of bounds by Sabre. Chellingham really finding their offensive groove here. They were able to score right before going into the half. Scored really quickly on their first drive coming out of halftime and are now moving pretty efficiently downfield here midway through the third quarter. Three receivers far side. Ingram looks to the air. Man, bearing down pressure on him. Ingram throws it away, gets it back to the line of scrimmage. And McLeod was in the area, so it's not intentional grounding. That was Hendrack, the Spartan defender that was putting pressure on Ingram almost the entire time that play. Ingram doing a nice job keeping his composure, keeping the play alive, and doing the smart thing and throwing the ball away. It's now third and five at the 45. The whistle is blown. And they're readjusting the uh, spot of the ball. <laughs> Coach Gore using that opportunity real quick to uh, talk it over with his offensive group. Ingram's in the gun. We got Mooney back there with him. He's been fantastic all game. And a flag is thrown. Calling that on Springfield. It's a neutral zone infraction on the Spartans. And that will be a free first down. Ball is now in enemy territory. Just across midfield. So Springfield giving away yardage there as Ingram, play action to Mooney. Goes deep over the middle, Williams stops. Oh, it's incomplete. He had to come back for it. He initially had it but the Springfield defender laid a hit stick down on him. I believe that was Ryan Gibbons. The Spartan safety that was able to put the hit on Zaire Williams. It was a good throw from Ingram, a tiny bit underthrown. But Williams did a nice job readjusting himself to come back to the ball. But just with him standing still and Gibbons coming in full force at him, it was a little hard for him to hold on to the ball. 
So the officials are actually backing the ball up. Not see a flag on the play. Very well could have missed it, but Ingram now hands it off. That's Mooney going up the gut. He was a defender! Oh my goodness, Mooney! You didn't have to do him like that! Flag thrown out the tail end. Air Mooney on that play. It's going to be a personal foul, I believe, on Cheltenham. So unfortunately. That will negate that spectacular play there by Mooney. I'd still put that one on the highlight reel. I don't care if there was a uh, there was a uh, flag on that play. That was outstanding by Mooney going up and over that Springfield defenseman. Looks like it's about second or first in 15 now. Ingram in the gun. Play action. Going deep over the middle. And Sanford Trout coming back for it. But he drops it and it's incomplete. So there have been a lot of positives in the passing game. The receivers are doing a great job getting open. Has been a few drops. But if you're looking at this pass game for Chellingham, you got to like what you're seeing from the receivers in terms of running routes and getting open. And also Ingram by going through his reads and making the right throws. Got McLeod now in the backfield. Two by two set, man in motion. McLeod gets the carry near side, gets a block. And will get back to the original line of scrimmage just beyond the 50 yard line. Tight end in there is number 39, freshman Leonardo Chore. So it's third and 10 now as the Panthers get back to the, where they originally began this sequence of plays. It's an empty set. Williams and Wyke are your near receivers and Williams now goes in motion. One on one near side. It's a pass play. Ingram rolling far side, throws it back over the middle, caught. And picking up the first down being upended is Tyrese Alexander Lee Odom. Ingram looked back towards the middle of the field, threw it over the middle, and was able to move the chains there as Malachi Wyke now comes limping off the field after that play. Matthew Jean Baptiste will take his spot. Three receivers near. It's going to be a screen. And the Oh, now going far side after no blocking develop. Going down the sideline, one man to beat. Touchdown, Cheltenham. Donovan Aguirre getting the screen, being patient with it. Couldn't find blockers developing. Decides to take it near side, sideline, and speeds his way all the way for the touchdown.
So about a 49-yard receiving touchdown there for Aguiari. Timeout called there by Chetland Ham. I mean, that really was a fantastic job. Just being patient. Tried to see how the blocks would develop. Couldn't find anything. Then he realized there was a bunch of room on the near side of him. They actually might be going for two now. I see uh, Ingram getting out there on the field. Mooney also out there. I see uh, Zach Strange as a tight end. Sanford is your receiver far side of the field. They're going once again with that jumbo formation. Chase Ginyard is one of the uh, big men in the backfield. Oh, they give it to uh, Mooney. Does he break the plane? He does. Two point conversion is successful. The score is now 30 to two. I got excited for a second. I thought they uh, handed it to one of the big men back there. Which is something I would absolutely love to see before this game's over. Chellenham's offense is in a sync right now. Three consecutive drives that ended by the football going into the end zone. This past one being a 49-yard touchdown on the screen to Donovan Aguiari. So I mentioned pregame that Springfield has not beaten these Panthers in 30 years. You can kind of see why. So I don't see McKenzie back there to feel the kick. Looks like Kenny Granderson is one of the returners. That's uh, the player at the bottom of your screen as that's a line drive kick. Far side, it's going to be Granderson fielding it. Max Sanchez was the other returner back there and Granderson dives forward. And tried to pick up as much yardage as he could. There's actually uh, Mike Capofieri, excuse me, the freshman running back on the return. And it appears that Dylan McKenzie's night as a quarterback, at least, is over. You got senior Mateo Ringgold in there now. I don't see McKenzie on the field as a wideout or a running back. Hendrack is your receiver far side, and it's a little touch pass to Max Sanchez. And he picks up about a yard or two on the play. So Ringgold will stay in. No, uh, no little package right there that was meant for Ringgold. Same for Mason Granderson far side now. Ooh, man, stumbling in motion. They pitch it to him. Going up the middle of the field now and picking up the first down, Marcino. Stumbled on the end around. He's able to uh, successfully field the pitch. He picks up a first down. So Cheltenham's defense has played great all game long. With 
see if that can continue on this drive here. Ringgold sends Sanchez in motion. It's a handoff to the running back, that's Gibbons. A nice pick up there. Does look like that Shellingham is remaining with their starters in the game. And I'm pretty sure that Springfield has their starters in the game also, with the exception of uh, Mateo Ringgold in there at quarterback. Marcino once again on the end around pitch, but he is met almost immediately. Jamar Hook Waller in there on the blitz. And they will lose yards on that play. This crowd has been having a great time here at homecoming. Cheeler is having a great time. It makes sense. It's a fun night. Your football team is performing well. No reason to not be excited on this night. Hendrak now at the bottom of your screen. Sanchez in motion, Ringgold, play action, it looks like pressure in his face, throws it away! Was that picked off? Almost. Just as Sanders tried diving for it, but the ball hit the ground first. I think it might be a holding call on that play also for Springfield. No, an illegal block in the back. There was pressure almost immediately there, bearing down on Ringgold. So with 10 seconds remaining here in this third quarter and Cheltenham up 30 to two, Springfield will go for it here on fourth down. Let's see if uh, Ringgold has a little bit of punting ability in him. Sanchez in motion, it's going to be a little touch pass to him. Stayed on his feet initially and will bar barely get back to the line of scrimmage. And that is a turnover on downs. And the Panthers will take over at Springfield's, call it 40 yard line. So that will also be the end of the quarter. Chellenham putting on an absolute offensive clinic. Final quarter of play when we return. Back here in Wincote, Chellenham beginning the fourth quarter of play with a handoff to Jared Higginbottom, the freshman running back wearing number zero. So you can expect to see a couple of the uh, underclassmen getting some playing time. Also got Farrow Brooks in there as a wide receiver. He now shifts a little bit. Goes to the far side. Ingram still remains your signal caller. 
It's a little flip to uh, Brooks, but the play is whistled dead. It's a false start on Tottenham. That will happen when you have some uh, younger players in. We'll see a little bit of an uptick in mistakes, but that's the only way you can get your underclassmen to learn. Give them first-hand experience. Also see a little bit of a uh, different offensive line in there. I see Sharif Roberts getting some time. Look at that, you got Keon right in there at tight end. It's gonna be a little flip to Pharaoh Brooks. Brought down by the legs there. By Gibbons. So they got a whole bunch of different uh, personnel there. Now uh, we see some more familiar faces in there. It also might have been a Wildcats. I see Ingram coming back in. I don't know, I didn't really see who took the snap. But right, Hook Waller, Higginbotham, and Farrow Brooks all check out. See Sanford in there. You got Malachi Wyke. So they have Tyrese Alexander, Lee Odom checking in late. Also been Donovan Ayari. Williams in motion, fake the screen to him, and now Ingram's gonna run, he has a little bit of room, stays on his feet, breaks a tackle, and is brought down by a pair of Spartan defenders. Down near about the 35 yard line. Now they sub out Ingram and bring in A.J. Gordon as a quarterback. So no Adam Rodgers. A.J. Gordon will now be operating the offense for the time being. They did have to bring in Rodgers last week due to uh, due to Ingram actually coming down with an illness. Coach described it as kind of like his body was like locking up. He had like a bad cold. Selfie so now was obviously he was able to play in today's game. But now they get to see what AJ Gordon has in them. The sophomore, both Ingram and Rodgers are juniors. Nine ten left here. Thirty to two is the lead here for the Panthers. Gordon is your quarterback. Agyari, Sanford, White, and Lee Odom all lined up near side. Zaire Williams is the halfback. They now put White in motion. They give it to Williams. I don't know if they got enough for the first down. They did not. It's a turnover on downs. For the Panthers. Definitely see a bunch of uh, younger players now coming in on the defensive side of the ball. And when you're up by 28, you have the ability to do that. Chris Nelson, a freshman, is in there. <laughs> a staggering 6'1", 256 as a freshman. It's unfair, jeez. Tamir Jordan, one of the defensive backs. It's on the near side of the screen at the bottom. It's 
to have Efferent Epperson in there as a defensive back as Gibbons gets this carry. Picks up almost enough for the first down. Let's call it about nine. Still got Mooney in there, though, as a safety. A.J. Gordon, once again, leading this offense. Hendrack. Receiver at the bottom. It's a little touch pass to Max Sanchez, and Sanchez barreling through that Chellenham defense. Brought down by Epperson. Gordon once again in the gun. Gibbons in the backfield. And he gets a carry and only a pickup of about, let's call it two. So following this game, Cheltenham will close out its season by going to Upper Moreland and then a back-to-back -back home games against William Tennant and Wissahickon. Meanwhile, Springfield... We'll go to Plymouth White, Plymouth White Marsh, host Upper Moreland, and then go to William Tennant for their final three games. Sanchez on the jet sweep gets near the first down marker. 7.26 and counting. Now a third and about three. This is a good opportunity to give your uh, kind of like your backup offense a little bit of a presser situation. Pretend it's a, a closer game. Time is ticking down. It's third and short. You want to convert this ball to keep it alive. Same play once again. Sanchez, he picks up the first. And we'll tack on a couple of extra yards. Ball is now inside the 30. A fresh set of downs here. Granderson splits out wide. Sanchez in motion and it goes to Gibbons up the middle. And Gibbons picks up a few there. So assuming nothing miraculous happens uh, within the remaining six minutes and change of game time, Chellenham will improve to four and three and one and one in the conference. Meanwhile, Springfield will fall to four and two and will go to one and one in the conference. As Sanchez was the recipient of the ball in that play, and I believe there is a Springfield offensive player down there is. So while they tend to him, we'll take a quick break.
And we are back. The Springfield offensive lineman was able to walk off under his own power. Was hobbling though. As Sanchez tries to shake and bake. Oh, they're trying to strip the ball from him. Jeez oh, Louise. <laughs> There is a, a positive gain on the play. It's now fourth and about eight. So let's see what A.J. Gordon and the Springfield offense do. Sanchez comes off the field. Taking his place is Capo Fieri. You also got Gibbons and Marcino lining up wide. And Gordon rolls far side. Will let it fly. And it is incomplete. Tried to hit Gibbons on the out route. But nothing to it. And another turnover on downs with 417 remaining in this one. Excuse me, that was a uh, tear ringled. AJ Gordon is now coming in for uh, Cheltenham. My apologies. So Gordon comes in, Higginbotham joins him. See Titus Wagner also on the field. Gordon, play action to Higginbotham. Will keep it and maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Michael Dunn in that wide receiver. The fellow on the bottom of your screen. And that time Higginbotham receives the sweep. And once again... Hardly any yards gained. So despite it being a blowout, still a bunch of fans here for Cheltenham. They're just having a fantastic homecoming night. Forgot to mention this, but defensive end Keon Wright named homecoming king. The star defensive end for the Panthers. The false start is called there for Cheltenham. And when I say that Wright is a star, I mean he is a star. He has, I think it was about 13 different D1 uh, colleges looking at him. Most of them power five. Penn State, Ole Miss, Nebraska, Maryland, Boston College, Duke, Georgia Tech. Since he was in there, Bowling Green. It's Gordon. Now tosses it near side. It's hauled in. Wagner, the freshman. So it's pretty evident that Wright will be getting his education paid for at one of the uh, one of the better football programs in the nation. Coach Gore also told me that junior Trey McLeod has D1 interest. However, I could not find a profile for him on 24-7 sports. Gordon looks to the air once again. It's incomplete near his own sideline. Done the intended receiver. And that brings up fourth down and time to punt. We even got the backup punter James Wilmore in. Or no, excuse me, that was a uh, that was a turnover on downs. My apologies, it looked like the uh, 
flip to fourth down after the play was over, but that was a turnover on downs for A.J. Gordon in the offense. As Ringgold will once again come back onto the field, see if him and the uh, Springfield offense can put a touchdown on the board. 2.36 remaining here. Hendrack, receiver on the bottom of your screen. Sanchez in motion, gets the handoff, and will pick up a first down. Sanchez avoiding a couple of defenders on that play. It's actually short of the line to gain. It's only going to be second and three. Same formation. But now you got two receivers far side. Ringgold facing pressure. Scrambles near side, staying alive. Ringo, oh, down he goes. Mooney, like a flaming bullet coming in there, taking down Ringgold from the defensive backfield. Already had a ton of pressure in his face. And seeing number two flying at you definitely does not help. Now, now that brings up third and long. And a timeout now is called by Springfield. So before this game is over, we once again want to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Robertson Gamble, your number one source for property maintenance and restoration, specializing in storm damage cleanup, serving New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania. Visit www.robertsongamble.com to learn more. Thank you to Robertson Gamble for sponsoring today's game. And as always, we would also appreciate it if you drop us a subscribe on the uh, YouTube channel you're currently watching the game on and also follow us on all social media platforms at the SFBN. Your support means the world to us and we truly do love broadcasting these sports for you. Ringo lines up by himself in the backfield. He rolls right, wants to throw, directing traffic and just tosses it out of bounds. So that's now a fourth down. 111 remains in the game. So let's see if uh, Springfield has one more in them to pick up the first down, move the chains. If not, a couple more kneel downs and we will be on our way. Ringgold tosses it over the middle, incomplete. Wanted to hit the tight end nozzle. It was behind him. And another turnover on downs and following two more snaps. This game will be over. So a beautiful showcase on both sides of the ball from Cheltenham here. Ingram with three touchdowns, one to Alexander Lee Odom, one to Wyke, and another one to Donovan Aguiari. Also saw a rushing touchdown from Trey McLeod, and actually they're not going to go with the kneel down. They are instead going to run a play. That's the backup quarterback, Adam Rogers, picking up some yards with his legs. He steps out of bounds into Cheltenham territory, and Mateo Ringgold is now down for the defense. So I was fully expecting for Cheltenham to take a knee, get it over with, but instead they decided to run a play 
and Adam Rogers picks up a good bit of yards. As Ringle is now down. It appears to be a lower leg injury. And it's so, you, so, you hate to see this, especially at the end of a game. You know, once you know you're not going to get into the win column, the one thing you want to do is leave this game healthy, and unfortunately, it looks like Springfield will be down a starting defensive back and their backup quarterback. Ringgold helped to his feet. And he'll walk off under his own power. So that'll be the end of his night. And it appears now that Chutlinham is in victory formation. Rogers takes the knee. And one more in this game will go in the books as a W for Cheltenham. A 30 to 2 victory. Just a clinic on both sides of the ball. Really limiting Springfield's offense as to what they can do and their star player, Dylan McKenzie, unable to get anything done. Meanwhile, for the offense, Jonathan Ingram was spectacular. Three passing touchdowns. Really the only mistake of the game coming on that intentional grounding in the end zone that resulted in a safety. So, 30-2 to two is your final score here from Wincote. As both teams will now go to 1-1 one one in conference play. Charlingham improves to 4-3 and three in Springfield Township will fall to four and two. So that will do it here for us at the Sports Fan Base Network. For our camera operator, Dale Mountainy, our producer, Kiana DeJesus, and our executive producer, Ari Bluestein, I'm Darren Healy. Have a great weekend, everyone.